Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a very quick comparison here between the uh, Galaxy S9 and Note 8 phone. Uh, so Samsung's latest flagship versus 2017 flagship uh, later on in the year. Let's see how they do compare. And obviously the Note 8 is uh, a lot cheaper nowadays. You can get probably about 600, 700 euro. Uh, so it represents good value for money comes with a bigger screen here, S Pen and full uh, Samsung suite of apps as well. Uh, you can see quite a big difference there in terms of the boot talk, gotta say, uh, much faster on the S9. Maybe that is a combination of like software optimization uh, as well as a new processor, which I think is Exynos. Uh, in the 9 series, we did have the 8 series in the Note 8 here. Uh, so we're just going to see how they do compare. We have installed a few apps. I think we've shut everything down as well and updated everything. So we can see if there's any differences here. You can see some of the icons is a little bit different in terms of the um, Samsung experience here. Uh, so that is quite nice and so far I can't see a huge difference between them both of them seem to be very uh, similar here in terms of opening stuff up as you can see and uh, that uh, you know goes to show you how strong the 8 series Exynos process actually was. Uh, let's try some third party apps. We do have UFC. A little bit snappier on the left. Uh, not a huge difference though. And Rave. Again, the left you can see a little bit quicker there, um, but I think they've reached a peak here in terms of the performance of the processor. You can't see a massive difference here, uh, which you know goes to show you that the Notate is still very relevant. Uh, my only criticism would be that the battery should be, you know, four thousand for a power user kind of phone. Uh, we'll just have a look at some website loading speed. And then uh, we can have a look at the benchmark. So let's just load this page. So it looks like the Note 8 there, a little bit snappier to actually load the overview. And you can really see here the Note 8 comes into its own when it comes to the web browsing. Uh, it, is it me as well that the the S9 seems to have a more kind of coldish display here, uh, like a little bit more bluish, especially when you tilt it at certain angles, whereas the one on the Note 8 seems to be a bit more colour accurate. This is what I'm noticing anyway, but you know maybe you notice something different. Uh, in terms of the sensitivity, you can see nice and responsive here, which is good. Let's just uh, click on a link, go right to the top, and uh, this one, I don't think it's responded then, so let's just go back and click on another link, um, let's just go with that one. So a little bit snappier here on the left. Both of them have the most up-to-date uh, Samsung browser as well. So should be uh, quite comparable. Again, you can see here there's a big delay on the S9, which is quite inexplicable. It does seem to be quite slow when it comes to the Wi-Fi. Uh, which is why I don't understand, you know, the latest stuff. But so have a look at the raw benchmark here. I did want to run your Geekbench, so we can see. 
uh, you are getting your Android 8 as well here on the left which should give some optimizations under the hood you know uh, we will just fast forward this so you can see I think the S9 is powering through this a little bit faster which is what I would expect here uh, but it's really strange because you don't really see the performance gains reflected in the day-to-day -day usability of the device and you know that is quite weird you can also see how quick the battery drains I've took, taken the sims out I think I charged it to 100% before this video it's already on 96% so you know usually like for example with my Mate 10 Pro uh, if I'm just using it a little bit you, you, you literally you take like half an hour for it to drop percentage it's amazing in terms of the battery but nevertheless how do they uh, sc score here it's going to be uh, will they get 2000 for the single core on uh, the new processor yes they will they'll get 3600 that's a huge score for android wow i wasn't expecting it to be that high i mean i think that's getting close now to what apple does get uh, which is still very good in terms of you know the, the beastliness of the A is it A11? Yeah, I think we're on A11 now. So very good score here uh, for the single core score. Uh, let's see what the Note 8 gets, which should be probably a little bit lower because of the Android 7.1.1. Ah, uh, yeah, so it just breaks through to 2000 here. So solid improvement in terms of the benchmark no doubt about it uh, I just wanted to also do a Wi-Fi test here see how they do compare because either day I did this and it wasn't very good on the Samsung uh, S9 so I was wondering you know what was happening maybe it was a one-off let's just start it up again I'm not downloading anything or any, you know, using the Wi-Fi. And it's still, you know, it's very lethargic when it comes to the Wi-Fi. Maybe it's just mine, you know. I've not really watched anyone else's videos, but some people have been saying that others get a good score. I always get the dodgy phones, don't I? You know, remember the P10 as well? Couldn't get that past, like, 20 megabytes. Uh, we can see, you know, no A is not messing around. Uh, very nice score still here. Uh, obviously, with the Note, you are also getting the S Pen, which you know personally I don't really bother with, but it does give it a unique selling point, and you're not going to get that uh, with the uh, S series. So you can see the pen doesn't work here. Uh, which is quite nice. The only thing obviously about the Note 8 uh, is the fingerprint scanner uh, which uh, is in a terrible place. Uh, they have fixed that on the S9 but overall you know I think the Note 8 is the better device here. Uh, when you consider like what you're getting a bigger screen uh, it's probably about the same kind of price and also uh, you know, as I said, the S Pen functionality, 6 gigs of RAM as well, and I think a slightly bigger battery. So, you know, do uh, consider all that. I don't think the Exynos 9 series is a big leap as well in terms of the day to day performance. Good in terms of the benchmark, but in terms of the performance, you know, not a huge kind of uh, leap here. But yeah, just a quick comparison here.